How you doing? Steve Noble, Noble Moto. What we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how to set your chain alignment without any special tools. You really can do this. You can pretty much eyeball it with a close eyeball and attention to some detail. Obviously, having the right tool is a great thing. Motion Pro makes a great alignment tool for it. I'm not discouraging anyone from having one of those, but not everyone has all the special tools. So, here's how to do it without the special tools. Now comes a multi part process. We have to align the chain and tension the chain at the same time. Obviously right here, there is entirely too much slack in that chain. So you want to tighten this up right here. That's tensioning the chain. Now it's designed that the chain slack should be 2% of the center to center distance on the sprockets. You can do the math and figure that out if you want. What you're really after is you want to have this thing far enough back that this isn't flapping in the breeze. That would be a little tight right, or a little loose right there. You don't want this thing flapping in the breeze and slapping into everything when you're riding down the road. But also, if it's super crazy tight, which I can only get it so tight here, which sounds like a good idea. However, the problem is, you have to remember, each one of these little links is basically like a little pin in a socket joint. You kind of think of it as an exaggerated manner would be like this screwdriver through this washer here. So if you have proper chain tension, the pin is through the center of the ring there and it's floating on a film of grease. If you pull it too tight, this pin is gonna go to the side, and it's gonna push all the grease out of the way, and it's going to cause this to prematurely wear out. Nobody wants that. Chain tension explained. So what is happening is when you're trying to set your chain tension, the, the tension you're setting is really from the rear sprocket here to the front sprocket here that's underneath this cover. Obviously, the further back it is, the tighter the chain is. You move your wheel forward, chain goes slack. The technical definition of this, or the technical spec, is the chain slack should be 2% of the center to center distance from the front sprocket to the rear sprocket. In theory, that is correct. However, your swing arm pivots here. That means as your swing arm pivots, when it pivots down, essentially your chain is going to get looser. And when it pivots way up, your chain is going to get looser. That's because the distance from here to here is getting shorter because it's pivoting here. So that's where you want to set it. Because if you set it up to where even at ride height, your rear swing arm is sitting on a downward angle like this, then when you hit bumps, on your suspension compresses, the rear suspension is going to go up and it will over tension your chain. Now this thing's set up on the stand. I'm doing this by myself. How am I going to set that up? You ask. I'm going to take a rear ratchet. I'm going to take a ratchet strap and hook it around here and hook it up the grab handle and pull it until everything's in line. Once everything's in line or eyeballed really close to be in line, then I can set my chain tension. Hopefully you can see this. Where the wheel sits at right now, the chain is fairly well aligned. When your chain is extremely misaligned, it's gonna look something like that. If you look up the chain, if you put your eye to it back here and you actually look up the chain, you should be able to see it pivots or there's a curve right around here. Then it gets straight and it goes all the way up to the front sprocket. Now you can't really see this front sprocket and that's okay. If you can straighten out this pivot right here or this angle right here, that means the front one will straighten out too because they're gonna move at the same angle. Think about that from geometry class. Not really a better way to explain that. But there is way too far to the left. There is way too far to the right. Hopefully you can still see, especially if I pick it up a little bit, hopefully you can see how it pitches to the right. So what we're going to do to align this thing is we're going to first set our alignment. We're gonna crank our axle adjusters in there until it's aligned, and then we'll set our tension. Because you wanna set your alignment first, because as you adjust your alignment, that can affect the actual chain tension. So 
right here you can see it's pretty close there's not really much of a bend right here it's a pretty much straight shot so with that in mind we're sitting pretty good right there so we'll move back to an outer shot and uh, i'll show you how to actually make the different adjustments but what i will be looking at the entire time is looking up this chain to see if i have that pivot here you know that angle here or if it, the top of the chain looks like a straight shot going all the way forward. So now what we're going to do is we're going to loosen our jam nuts here on this bike. It takes a 10 millimeter wrench. Make sure your axle is loose. Now, a lot of people are going to bring up that right here, there are little hash marks here on the swing arm. You can't really see them because of the amount of dirt and rust on this bike. And you can use those and count, oh, hey, this side's three hash marks in and the other side's three hash marks in. I had a Suzuki Band, a 96 Suzuki Bandit. Those were wrong. So you can use them. I don't recommend it. So what we did, we'll loosen up this jam on this side, loosen it way up, loosen it way up on the other side. Now we're going to crank these screws in until they make contact. And we're going to start with some slack there on the chain. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a flashlight, and from my angle here, my vantage point, I'm going to take that and ratchet, and I'm going to start cranking the right one in first. And as I do that, I can look up this thing. Whoops, moved it too far. I can look up this thing and see the alignment of the chain. Now you can see as I'm doing that, it's lifting up the chain right here. So it's setting our chain tension. So I'm gonna crank a little on the other side, all while looking up the chain. And right around there, a little bit more, right around there, I got really good chain alignment. And with a flashlight in my eyeball, I can actually see all the way to the front sprocket. So I can see down the top of this chain and see it's all nicely in line. There's no weird pitches in it halfway. However, I still have way too much slop right here. Also, I do technically need to compress the suspension a little bit. Okay, so I have a ratchet strap on the other side, and it's compressing the rear suspension enough that everything is pretty much in line. Like I said, everything would be the rear axle, swing arm pivot bolt, and the front sprocket, counter shaft sprocket, whatever. Anyways, it's all up there and the bike is essentially sitting at ride height. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, I usually don't go this far. I usually just set it a wee little bit slack and then ride the snot out of the thing. But this is the internet and somebody's gonna be like, dude, you didn't set your suspension right. <laughs> so, you know, feel free to argue with those guys in the comments. The big thing you're really after, remember, is you just wanna take the slack out of this. But like I demonstrated, you just want it to be floating on that film of grease in there. You don't want it over here. So you don't want this sucker guitar string tight. So we're actually only going to go a little bit tighter than that right there. Now to help maintain our alignment, if you prefer, we can actually use a wrench, and we will do it evenly. Start with the wrench at 6 o'clock. Going to go 12 o'clock. So one half turn here. One half turn on the other side. Now we'll check our tension. It's actually sitting pretty solid there. That's pretty good. We got a wee little bit of sag there. A lot of people call that about eh, five eighths of an inch, maybe half an inch or so. Uh, and that's also set at ride height. So from there, we can torque down our rear axle and put our cotter pin in. And then we'll lock these jam nuts. We'll crank them in here and we'll lock them in place to hold the axle adjusters in place. Take our metric seven eighths wrench. So now, take your rear drum here, slide that back there. Now remember, there's a little T-bolt on the back. Throw that on the floor. Pick up the T-bolt, you just threw on the floor. Remember, there's a little rectangle-ish looking head here. And there's a little flat on the back side of this. That little rectangle, the long part of the rectangle-ish looking head needs to go up against that flat. 
That's what holds it in place. If this isn't sticking out far enough, you probably don't have that aligned properly. So, there might be a rubber washer that goes in here. 